doors and almost 100 General Motors plants throughout the country lie thousands of secrets, military secrets that Hitler would give his best panzer divisions to know. For in these plants is being designed and built a large part of the avalanche of weapons that will break the back of the Axis. Training men for the tremendous job of making, using and maintaining the tools of war is of primary importance as General Motors makes victory its business. Production mounts and new blood is added. Girls and women take their place in the line along with the men of industry. New hands, new tools, new plants. Working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For General Motors is undertaken to produce more than 10% of all war material fabricated from metal. Thousands of workmen in four GM divisions turn off machine guns on a mass production basis. Output is months ahead of schedule. And above the clattering death sting of machine guns will also sound the loud cough of cannon, anti-aircraft cannon, rapid fire cannon. Each will carry with it the perfection and endurance of General Motors workmen. Trucks that are the workhorses of today's mechanized forces are sent by GM workers to every part of the world where there is action, where they are needed to win our fight. Trucks to keep our armed forces rolling on to Tokyo and Berlin. A word for power is diesel, power for submarines, for military searchlights, for tanks that rumble through all obstacles into battle. This diesel power comes from three General Motors plants, power in one-cylinder portable units, in giant 16-cylinder engines, and in new and radically different diesel engines. Keep them firing. That's the slogan in GM plants where they are making shells and cannon that are now being used by our fighting forces, making them better and faster than anyone has ever made them before. In another General Motors division, thousands of workers are turning out cartridge cases for shells that are bursting in the faces of the enemies of freedom. Time is important, and General Motors has cut time 50% with a new process of casting parts for guns, tanks, and planes. The mechanized gear for war is born in cauldrons of molten metal. Machine gun mounts for the Army's new high-speed tanks have taken the place of peacetime products by General Motors. And instruments of uncanny precision, now manufactured by GM men and women, help to aim the demolishing gunfire of land and sea batteries. Roller bearings make our gigantic war machine run smoothly. Roller bearings for military trucks and diesel engines. Smaller bearings that ensure clock-like performance of delicate instruments. Bearings for America's mightiest battle wagons and for sleek sky fighters to keep them sailing, rolling, and flying on to victory. Machine tools, the master tools of industry and of victory, are made at a constantly increasing rate. GM radios are also a must to flash the commands of combat to tanks, planes, and every vehicle of war. General Motors' liquid-cooled engine powers Army's newest planes. The P-39, the famous cannon on wings, and the speedy P-38 are given the power to outfly anything on wings. Two General Motors divisions are turning out air-cooled airplane engines, turning them out with the same know-how, the same mass production methods that went into the making of automobiles. In the first quarter of 42, one division turned out as many of these power plants as the production schedule called for by the whole first half of the year. And production is still stepping up, stepping up at a rate that will soon put it a full 12 months ahead of the original schedule. Bombers. Bombers to blast the way for our fighting forces. Parts and sub-assemblies for the famous B-25, the bomber with a reputation for giving Tokyo the first taste of its own medicine. In cooperation with the aircraft industry, General Motors has pioneered in applying mass production methods to the manufacture of aircraft. Work goes on day and night under the deft fingers of General Motors men and women. They are producing an avalanche of weapons for victory in General Motors manufacturing centers all over America. One of the most important of these centers is Dayton, Ohio, a city gearing up to the grim task of war. For Dayton is making victory its business. Dayton has a story to tell, the story of a city at war. Yes, the people.
people of Dayton make the implements of war. Dayton men and Dayton women put the guns, the ships, the planes, the tanks, the armored cars, and the bombs in the hands of American soldiers. For Dayton people play the mighty drama of war. Great factories in Dayton, with their men and women and machines and skill in mass production, produce the tools of war in ever-increasing numbers. Men and women in the plants of General Motors in Dayton are arming America. This is Dayton. Its workers, its machines, its plants, its management. Giving land, sea, and air forces the tools with which to fight for victory. The men and women of these plants in Dayton put a thousand parts in fighting planes. Big parts and little parts, vital parts, from landing gear to propeller, from controls to engine. The people of Dayton make the bomb releases. Make the hydraulic parts that open bomb doors. Make the fuses that set off the kiss of death. A gift from Mr. and Mrs. Dayton straight to the enemy. These are the tools we give our men somewhere over enemy lands, turning back the tide of tyranny and hate. We make parts for terrors of the sea, bearings, generators, parts for diesel engines that power Navy's might. We of Dayton, from our great plants, send out the guns to fighting men. Big and little guns with which they terrorize and hold, drive back and win. We make the shells, right here in Dayton. Men and women make the shells, the mine fuses, the tail fuses, to bomb the Jap and the German Nazis to destruction. And we drive the tanks through enemy land. Tanks that Dayton men and Dayton women have helped to build. Trucks and armored cars into which we have poured our materials and our labor. For there are thousands of men and women already working in these plants in Dayton. They know it's their war. A war that can be won only through production. Only by the skill and sweat and speed of these people in the plants. Grinding and polishing, forging and boring, beating metal and powder and sweat into tools of war. Make it right. Make it well. These are the answers to Guam and Wick. They want more land? Well, we'll give it to them. Give them the iron from American soil burned into steel, hammered into engines, drowned into shells. We'll give them all we have, loaded with dynamite to blow them to hell. Here's a slap in the face for our boys in Pearl Harbor. Dayton is strong and prepared. Dayton's men and women are on the battle line of production, for everything depends on production. Men in Australia, men in Russia and China, men on every battlefront need production, and Dayton gives it to them. They tore up plants and built them new to do this job. They built new machines, trained more men, ordered, installed, turned on the power, and Dayton is doing the job, making guns and tanks and planes and shells for America's victory. These workers in these great plants are the miracle men and women of production. They're doing the job well, putting their skill and sweat and machines into speedy production of tools for our fighters on land, sea and air. A tank will win another hundred yards of ground from Hitler. A gun will send another Jap plane to its death. A shell will blast an enemy trench or a submarine. A propeller will pull an American plane over its objective and pull it home again. The men in khaki and blue need the things we produce in Dayton. And every part of every implement of war must be built to do its part. There shall be no failure. These are the tools of victory. It is the sweat of the workmen that wins this war. It is the products of these miracle men in a miracle industry. The industries of Dayton and the men and women of Dayton are fighting this war on the production line. It's a big job and they move up to it, march into it, put 
their brains and brawn and fingers into it. It's a big job, and they're doing it. March forward, Americans, citizens of Dayton. Every man and woman in every walk of life is behind the thousands of workers in these plants. March forward. Soon there'll be thousands more marching with you. More men and women producing even greater quantities of the tools of victory. More men and women than ever before producing for a war that will conserve our way of life. March forward into your job. That job is your country, the United States of America.